great deal more is involved here than an artist painting a portrait. A great deal more. The world of the psychic coexists with the physical world, sharing every instant of time, every speck of space. But what a very uneasy coexistence. For always the psychic seems to be like some wild thing, always straining at its own dimensions, always threatening to explode into the other world, the physical world. And sometimes it does. I suppose I forgot to mention it. My mother was painted, I thought. You've heard of him, I suppose. John Singer, thought. Everybody was painted by him in the old days. And then, of course, there was Whistler. I probably shouldn't confess it, but I saw Whistler once. Well, I was a very little girl, of course. And then, of course, there was Mr. Augustus John. Do you know Mr. Augustus John? He painted people like actresses and writers and those kind of people. Some of the aristocracy, too. Does it worry you if I talk like this? I mean, does it change my face or anything like that? Tell me. How is Jill? Oh, come now. Everybody knows the dashing young artist from Paris is going to marry Jill Barrington, who I've seen in all the gossip columns. Jill is a lovely creature, isn't she? Her mother and I were at school together, a married an army officer. Very little to get along on. But a frightening nice old thing. Speaking of money, your dealer friend, old Heathcote, asks a lot for your portrait, doesn't he? Still, I suppose you're worth it. Anyone who paints General de Gaulle. Oh, I wonder why Henry insisted I should be painted like this. He gave me these pearls. Oh, I'm sorry. I moved. Henry loves pearls. Our 25th anniversary, you know. Perhaps he wanted to immortalize the pearls. Oh, well. Now I've suddenly noticed something very odd about him. You've never looked at me once. Not once. All the time I've been sitting here. I thought artists were supposed to stare whole through their subjects. Or are you doing this from memory? Don't mind my saying, sir, you haven't exactly caught me. When am I supposed to be that wretched creature peering over her shoulder? You can paint this young lady in her own time. Not in mine. Did you hear me? What in heaven's name is wrong with you? Are you ill? Shall I call a doctor? Sir Henry always said that artists were mad. And I used to think that he was being reactionary. Oh. 
I thought you were painting Dinah Metcalf. Why didn't you phone? Forgot. Sorry. Look, it's, it's only six days to the wedding. You insisted on it being May the 7th, and we really make up, must make up our minds where we're going. Anyway, you, you need a holiday. You've been working far too hard. You look tired. Well, the travel agents insist that we make up our mind. May the 7th? Yes, May the 7th. Well, where are we going to go? Oh, there's the, um... Paul? Paul, do you love me? Who is she? What? You don't think I'm that stupid, do you? I've known for two weeks. Is that she? Is that my rival? Who is she? I don't know. I can't tell you anything. I simply don't know. Paul, will you stop treating me like a child? She's lovely. Jill. If you don't mind, I'm going. I'm going to leave you here with her. I've never seen it before in my life. man and boy for 32 years. I've learned to expect everything from you eccentric fellows, but you, my dear Paul, are quite different. If there's some woman you can't get out of your system, say so. That's an old story, I understand. But please try and remember that I have an investment in you. I can make you rich and famous, but I can't do anything if you keep on insulting my client. I'll pull yourself together. How is everything going with Lady Diana? Have you been listening to what I've been saying? I hope you have. For hours. My, I should have thought that you'd be relieved that I was being so civilized about it. I've never seen that girl in my life before, Jill, I swear it. Help me. I'm afraid. I can't, I just don't understand. You know, I've been 
commissioned to do three different portraits. Each one has ended as that girl. It's as though she were trying to possess me. I can't draw anything without that girl's face staring at me. Paul, I'm going to call the doctor. No. What are we going to do? Nothing. Paul, you're ill. It's six days before the wedding. We've got to decide where we're going to go. And phone that agency. And where's it going to be? Paris, Berlin, if, Venice. If I call Jeffrey. Venice. I wonder if you'd like Venice. Darling, I'm overworked. Overtired. I just need to get away. So where's it going to be? I'm going to call Jeffrey. Oh, good. I guess we'll put that travel agency out of its misery. I'll phone you. Oh, where have we decided to go? somebody else. Why won't you see a doctor? The only doctor that can help him is a psychiatrist. And he's afraid. He won't admit it, but he's afraid he's losing his mind. Got it. Got a plan. Of course, if it doesn't work out, we'll both be in trouble. It might be dangerous. It'll be worth the risk. Answering your phone. They've been trying to reach you for hours. Well, this is Horace Stapleton. I'm glad to know. That's museum art by a scope. Stapleton is mildly intelligent. More than I can say for the rest of the breed. Anyway, he knows your work, likes it. Might even get you hung in Detroit or Cleveland. Are you going to let us stand here? Mr. Stapleton would like to talk to you. I'm afraid we came at a bad time for you. But your dealer friend here insisted. You see, I'm leaving London tomorrow. But if some other time would suit you. Well, may I look? Oh, yes. Very interesting. What's that thing in the background? Some 
sort of symbolism? Yes, I'm most interested. What do you make of him? It's difficult to say. I have only spoken to him for a moment. But your friend is obviously disturbed. Perhaps deeply disturbed. But I think it might be a good idea if he could be persuaded to come into my nursing home for a while. Under observation. This is odd, isn't it? Knotted like a rope. Oh, how should I know? Like a, a garrote. A what? An instrument of death by strangulation. Sometimes a rope, sometimes a wire. And look at this gargoyle. It's sometimes a symbol. Of what? Of evil. If you want a quick possibly wrong opinion. I'd say he's invented this woman against whom he expresses such, such violence so that he won't have to reveal to himself the identity of the real person. The real person. His fiancée. But why? We've got to find out. Her heart's stronger now. She'll be recovering consciousness in a moment or two. It's a good thing you called me right away. Poor old Claire. Her dear soul's a complete recluse. She never leaves her cottage from one year to the next. I don't know how she stays alive. 
Been in mourning for 40 years, you might say. It happened during my father's time. In 1916, the second year of the First War. The young chap she was to marry was killed before the wedding. They just bought this house as their honeymoon cottage. Poor Claire. She moved in alone and has never left. Father kept the place as a shrine, as you can see. If you're interested, there's something else over there. The lace scarf on the frame. an old local custom. The groom gives the bride-to-be a lace scarf with seven knots in it seven days before the wedding. The bride unties a knot a day. There are two knots. He was killed two days before. Oh, she's coming round now. That's it. That's fine, my dear. little old lady from the tiny seacoast village passed away some years ago and she lies buried at last in a small churchyard next to her beloved Jean, dead since 1916. How to explain the inexplicable experience of Paul Roland, his journey into a life that he had apparently lived before? Well, there are millions of people all over the world who will tell you that the explanation is to them quite obvious. Reincarnation. That is the belief that at the instant of death, another is born with the same soul. A single flame passed from torch to torch throughout eternity. Now, perhaps there are others who will offer quite different psychic explanations. But one thing we know for certain, that such phenomena have been reported throughout the ages, many, many times. One of the most celebrated persons to encounter physical evidence of his own reincarnation was the 19th century poet, Gabriel Rossetti. For there exists today, indeed, an absolute likeness of Rossetti and the woman he loved, painted some 300 years before the poet's birth. He said, Kim Sabe. Who knows? 